right, so last year, we added several new features to the engine to support foliage rendering, and the Fortnite team used those features to ship Battle Royale Chapter 4. At the same time, Jacob over there and the team at Quixel were experimenting with what's possible for photoreal foliage environments, as well as testing out the latest functionality that we've been building for Unreal Engine. So, Jacob's here with us today in the Unreal Editor. Let's explore the environment. And what better way to do that than off-roading? And what better way to off-road than in a Rivian R1T? Now, Rivian uses Unreal to power their instrument cluster, including 3D visualization of their vehicles. So we worked with them to bring the R1T to life in this experience. Let's head on out, Jacob. Sure thing, on my way. All right. So we're building tools for interactive and dynamic worlds. So here we have chaos physics simulating rocks that tumble as we drive over them, leaves bend out of the way, and we also added some real-time fluid simulation. We worked with the team at Rivian to set up Unreal's chaos vehicle model to simulate the suspension of the truck and how the electric motors drive each individual wheel. Chaos also simulates how the tires compress and deform, and MetaSounds enabled the team to precisely resynthesize the sounds of the electric motors and mix them with the ambisonics of the jungle. So Rivian provided us with a highly detailed model of the truck about 71 million polygons that we're able to render in real time thanks to Nanite. Now, the Rivian not only looks incredibly realistic because of Lumen and Nanite, but also its materials. And today, we're introducing Substrate, our new material framework. <laughs> and to better demonstrate it, let's swap the paint out for Opal. Now, of course, you can't order a Rivian with Opal body panels, but Opal was the internal code name for this project and also a really great demonstration of Substrate's capabilities. The base layer models the iridescence, refraction, and reflections that occur inside of an Opal. And on top of that is a layer representing the polished surface and how light is absorbed as it travels through that clear layer of varying depths. And now we can add back on the dust and dirt layers and notice how the reflection changes when interacting with the dust layer, and that there are no artifacts along the transition from dirt to dust to opal. So Substrate is more expressive, enabling artists to create materials like this with different shading models and compose and layer those materials as they see fit. All right, let's uh, head on out, Jacob. On my way. All right. In terms of performance, Substrate materials that are similar to the current Unreal Engine shading model cost about the same. But now, artists have the freedom to author more complex materials for extremely detailed use cases, like in cinematics and in film. So we're going to drive under this fallen tree here. And everything that you've seen up to this point was painstakingly hand-built by the environment team at Quixel. Everything since that fallen tree has been built using our brand new experimental suite of procedural content generation tools, entirely an engine that are flexible, deterministic, and artist-driven. Our guiding principle in building these systems was to empower artists to make tools for artists. So Jacob's going to go ahead and add a procedural assembly to the world. And the cool thing is that it communicates. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Pretty cool. <laughs> and the cool thing is that it communicates with other nearby procedural elements in the scene, like the creek bed, so let's say a designer comes by, wants to direct the player to drive to the left. Jacob can simply move the assembly to the right, and everything updates to accommodate that change. Game design is iterative. So let's say the designer comes back, wants to give the player the choice of going left or right again. Jacob can simply move the assembly back over. Now, the artist who created this assembly also added some additional handles that Jacob can use to art direct where rock slides occur. Allows them to customize the piece a little bit more, make it a little easier for the Rivian to drive by. So we started by handcrafting that original part of the level to set the visuals and art direction for the entire piece, and then built out procedural tools that allowed the team to create a much larger play space much more quickly. Now let's see how we can use these procedural tools to make larger sweeping changes to the environment. So 
So Jacob, let's start by removing some of the trees in this area. Absolutely, that's easy enough, actually. All right, a little too much. Let's let's add some trees back in. Okay. And let's also add in some cliff formations, give it a little bit more variability. So the procedural systems are all deterministic. As Jacob is experimenting with different sets of input parameters, once he finds a set that he likes, he can always go back to it and get out exactly the same results. And the procedural systems aren't just placing trees and rocks, but also fog cards, bugs, birds, everything that's needed to bring this environment to life. And everything that you've seen here works at scale. This environment is four kilometers by four kilometers. If we hide all of the procedural elements, we can see that original hand-built area, about 200 meters by 200 meters. We believe that there will always be the need for hand-building environments, so we design these procedural systems to be tools for artists that work in concert with hand-built content. Both Substrate and the new procedural tools will be available in experimental form in 5.2. Okay. Okay, and action. I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. And sometimes, all I need is a look. Cut. Thanks, Mel, that was great. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay. Our technician, John, is currently pulling Mel's performance from the phone onto his machine where everything will be processed locally. We have updated our Live Link Face mobile app to capture all data at the best resolution possible with the device. MetaHuman Animator uses video and depth data to convert um, uh, this data into high fidelity performance animation, and it can even use audio to produce convincing tongue animation. John is currently scrubbing through the take to pick the section that he wants to process. John, are we all good with the data? Awesome. So from now on, it's just a single button click to kick off the processing, which for a performance of this length will take less than a minute to convert into animation. So Mel, while that is processing, let me show you something else. Yep. Oh, is that me? Yeah, this is what we refer to as your metahuman DNA. Cool, and this is generated by the capture we made earlier, right? Yeah, that's right. So from only three frames of video and depth data, we can generate a rig that predicts all of your facial expressions in just a couple of minutes. Wow, and do you only need to do this once for each actor? Yes, that's right. It calibrates the solver to your face so that we can produce the performance in, in, a, in a way that faithfully reproduces your original performance. That sounds cool. Yeah, so let's check back on the, on the processing, which today is on the latest CPU and GPU hardware from AMD. MetaHuman Animator uses a custom Epic Facial Solver and Landmark Detector. We can interactively look at the animation while it's being solved and compare it to your original performance. So it looks like it just, it's almost finished. After this, it's going to do one more pass to make the curves more stable, which is really quick. And from here on, we, can, we just need to export the animation. This takes only a few seconds, and then John needs to drop it in the level and add the audio so that we can see the result. So Mel's MetaHuman should now be ready in the level. Mel, you excited to see the results? Yeah, can't wait to see it. <laughs> I need performance capture to work like a mirror. I need it to capture whether I'm acting scared or angry. And sometimes, all I need is a look. Sign perf cut, take 13.
You like it? <laughs> Project M is one of NCSoft's most ambitious projects to date. What would it mean to you if the world was comprised of informational particles instead of physical particles? Oh, I got a little ahead of myself. I am TJ Kemp from NCSoft. Welcome to Project M. How would the fabric of simulated reality change our perceived world if we could tamper with the arrangement of those particles? This very idea is what sparked Project M. The informational particles that shape Project M's world can transform reality based on your choices and each choice you make will change your experience. The information that exists in the present reality determines how the world will unfold. value every encounter and every moment. These will be essential in the world of Project M. This is where our journey ends for now. I look forward to seeing you all again soon.